Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesdays. We're very glad you're with us today. It's September 14th, 2021. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, we ask you just put them right into the Zoom chat window. For those watching on Facebook, please just enter your comments or any questions you have into the comment field. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help people outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search You May Not Know. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007, and I'll tell you about our upcoming program that we're having this Friday at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. The practice interview team is a great way to practice your interviewing skills. You spend a lot of time on getting your resume do, done, networking, and uh, you know working on your LinkedIn profile. But how much time do you spend practicing interviewing? This is a great way to do it. If you'd like to get more details, please reach out to me, and I'll be glad to send those details to you. So uh, when we've got four different speakers who talk about LinkedIn, they each talk about LinkedIn from a little bit different point of view. And that's why it's nice to sort of rotate through these four speakers every month. Uh, Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, and Kurt Vonnemater, uh, each, they each approach LinkedIn from a little bit different point of view. So our speaker today is Locke Alderson. He's gonna talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies to get results. Uh, Locke is a con career consultant. He's been helping job seekers for many, many, many years. And uh, Locke, thank you very much for being with us. And I'll turn it over to you. Jeff, thanks. I appreciate that. And as Jeff had mentioned, I've been a career consultant for about, about 20 years. It could be 20 years last Saturday, as a matter of fact, 9-11. I was supposed to start a, a workshop on 9-11, and we had to postpone for a week, obviously. And prior to that, I, well, I mean, Overlapping times, I had 42 years in industry in recruiting and HR for a number of Fortune 500 companies like Continental Airlines, Litton Data Systems in Rockwell in California, and then here in Dallas with, with Raytheon Systems, and then with eSystems, which merged into, into Raytheon. And then I was with Oracle, Siebel, which merged into Oracle. So we'd like to get started with that. So uh, sharing the screen, and that's... Yeah, your camera is also turned off, by the way. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. And we got that now. We got the shared screen. If I can, I go to. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Hold on. I need to make you co-host. My fault. Begin I thought it was me. I'm, I'm technologically kind of illiterate, so. First okay. workshop of the week, and so I'm just not. I'm not in routine yet. So here you go. Well, let's start from the beginning. Slideshow. Very one on the very left says uh, from beginning. There we go. We should be up and running now. Yep, there we go. Thank you. Now go ahead and talk. There's my background up there, as you can see, with a number of different companies. I've been a recruiter and I've been a job hunter and I've been a career consultant. So I have background and, and I've used LinkedIn for probably at least 20 years during that time. So I'll go ahead and get started. There's three parts to the program today using LinkedIn or why, have we, why do we have LinkedIn? I'm gonna optimize your, your profile and then take a look at searching for jobs and then searching for people, the people to network that we're with. And why LinkedIn? LinkedIn is probably the most popular of the job hunting tools available today. It was started as a networking tool among sales and marketing professionals to be able to network with one another. And recruiters rapidly adapted it as, as a tool for themselves, okay? And because there are about 750 million people on LinkedIn worldwide, and that's one of the reasons that Microsoft bought LinkedIn, 
about 160, 160 million of those people are in the United States. So it makes it an excellent tool, particularly for looking for people and looking for jobs. LinkedIn is probably the number one tool. 90, it's estimated that 90, 92% of the hiring managers and recruiters use it as a tool for sourcing, for vetting, and identifying candidates. It's also a situation where at any point in time, there are 20 million uh, available jobs on LinkedIn throughout any given day. So that seems like a lot, but it is. Again, we wanna take a look at it as I said, take a look at your profile, and then take a look at your headline, your dashboard, the about section, which is really a summary. You're open to work, what does that mean? And how can it benefit you? Taking a look at your experience, your skills and endorsements, and then to optimize your professional, all the steps that you can take to do that. Well, it all starts out with your profile, which is basically your homepage. This is what people would see if they're clicking on LinkedIn and looking at you. You notice there are a number of things like there. There's a background shot, my headshot, my name, my headline, that, and you have 200 characters to work with here. A lot of people just put use one or two lines. There's more space, more real estate that you can use. Got to go back. I have to remember my touchpad is very sensitive. Open to work. I have not opened that, and we'll talk about that in a minute because I'm not actively looking for a job right now. Again, if I were open to work, you can do it either open to recruiters only or open to LinkedIn in general. I worked with a candidate last week and he's only open to recruiters. He doesn't want the world of LinkedIn to know that he's looking for a job, even though he's been out of a job for about six months now. But those are the things that you have that you can start with. You notice, again, their name, but your, is right here, my name, I'm, my actual name or legal name is John Locke Alderson Jr. But I go by my middle name since my dad was John and my son is John to, to identify who you are. Make it easy on the recruiter or hiring manager to know how to address you. It's just one of those things to help break the ice. Again, the open to work, we're gonna talk about it in a minute, but that's part of the things that we wanna talk about as well. What are the benefits of that? Again, the open to work here, as senior consultant, these are five job titles that you can do. If I were to click on that, it allows you to also identify location and also the type of work, whether you're interested in something full-time, part-time, contract, internship, or the different types of work that you can have. Most people and most jobs are looking for somebody full-time and people that are working full-time. So completing your LinkedIn profile is one of the things that you want to do. You want to have a complete profile so that you're your profile will achieve all-star status, which is the top rating that you can have on LinkedIn. And the things that are involved in that is having a professional headshot. You don't want one of those where you've, it's a casual shot or where you've take, somebody's taken your picture while you got your hands on a banding rock generator and your hair stands out like Back to the Future in the movie. There's a background photo or banner photo that you can include. Mine is from a trip to the Caribbean. As a matter of fact, it was one of those wide angle shots that I took we were on vacation. The headline should be the job title that you're applying for. If you don't put a job title in there, it's going to default to the last job title in your employment section. So that's something that you can do. You can have a number of job titles there as well. Again, you can have, and we'll take a look at some headlines. You have up to 200 characters now that you can play with in your headline. Open to work under your headline is something else that you want to cons seriously consider, as I mentioned. The about section used to be called the summary. It's an overview of your career and you can use keywords from your profession. You have about 2000 characters that you get to play with in the about section. So it's even longer than your actual resume. Contact information needs to be on the first line of your about section. If you and I are not directly linked as first trigger connections and I have not paid for LinkedIn premium or one of the recruiter packages, we may not have a way to get in touch with you or get in touch with one another but put it in the top line, the first line of your about section. It can be in the bottom line as well, but if you're not open to connections, we'll show you that in just a minute as we take a look at some people's connections. So put it in the first line, it's very important. Your experience section should be your job title. And if it's an unusual title, you kind of want to explain what it is. Use the generally recognized title in parentheses, plus a description of your duties. That could be fairly short. Terry Sullivan says that should be no more than three to four lines. And then the results or the accomplishments that you've had. These will show that you have experience in that area and the contributions that you've made. You also want to include some keywords from your profession. And you're the one that knows what those are. And if you don't, take a look at some of the ads that you're 
you're applying for? What are some of the keywords that they use? Incorporate them in your, in your experience section if they apply. Your skills from your profession and your endorsements. It used to be a lot easier to endorse. You could, it used to be a checkbox, but they've made that a little bit more difficult. Education award certification and professional development. On resumes, and on profiles, I frequently see that somebody has just included their basic education, that they had a BA or BS degree. They failed to incorporate the awards, the certification, and professional developments that they may have had. Shows what you've done to keep your skills current. Recommendations from coworkers and bosses are kind of vitally important. I got an, an email earlier this week or last week that talked about recommendations and said that recruiters want to know what you've achieved. If you've achieved things for your company, the co companies that you've worked with, the implication is that you'll achieve them for the companies that are looking for people and differentiate you from other applicants. Okay, you want to edit your URL. When you open up your profile, one of the things that it does is allows you to edit your profile on URL. Again, if you don't, this area will have your name with a dash like that and probably eight to 10 characters after that. So you want to go in and delete those. If you have a, a very common name like John Jones or Jeff Jones or Susan Smith, again, you might want to add something after that to clarify, like MBA or CPA. Uh, to that to do it. If that's something that hasn't been used, you'll get a green check. If it's been used, like somebody else has Jane, jo Jane Jones uh, in the Dallas area, you may get a red X. So you may have to add some other symbols or characters after that to distinguish who you are. Again, you also want to check in your settings and view below your profile. You can take a look at your account and take a look at your privacy settings. Some of the things that you want to go through you can change some of those and look at all of them that are there. The two that you definitely want to have is to see who can load, download your email address. If you're trying to look for a job, that's one of the things you want to make it easy for the people to find you and see who your connections are. If you're looking for a job, you may not want recruiters to know who all your connections are because there are many people like yourself who tend to gather with other people with a like background, and that may provide just a list of people that they can contact from their target list of candidates. Let's go back to your profile again. You have six to 10 seconds to get a recruiter's attention. Those are the same terms that they use about resumes. Well, what are the terms that you want to have? These are the things that you see. You notice on mine, there's a headshot. And this one, I've opened to work. I open to work to all LinkedIn members. Again, I have my name. I have the jobs that I'm looking for. And separated this by a pipe character. This if you do use the pipe character, which is an uppercase just above the shift, just above the enter key on your keyboard, you want to use a space on either side of it because consultant, pipe character, career together is not a searchable term. You want to have that. We'll look at different types of titles. You can be as short as you want or as descriptive as you want. Again, the connections is another thing. I've got about 6,000 connections. The contact information is important. I mentioned that a lot of people, they have not opened their contact information to letting others know about them if they're not first degree connections. So if that's the case, that's why you wanna have your contact information in the first line of your about section. And these are some of the things that are open to and see all the details that are there. But that's six to 10 seconds to take a look at my profile. What you're trying to do is to get somebody to click through and look at more of your profile. And if you do have, if you are open to work, you may need to adjust your picture, your headshot, so that it's not covered up by the banner over here, open to work. Well, let's take a look at some sample headlines. This is one I saw recently in an article I mentioned I saw last week, unemployed or unemployed. This was a whole, they gave some sample headlines, a number of people that are unemployed. And you see what that looks like, how it looks. That's not the best way to advertise that you're looking for a job. It's truthful, but again, you don't need to tell the whole truth about your situation. Well, let's take a look at some other headlines. Retired is okay too. I've seen some friends of mine who I've worked with over the years, and they're <coughs> no longer working for, excuse me, looking for a job, and they've just put retired and kind of deactivated their account by doing that. Seeking an opp new opportunity is truthful. Again, but it may not be the, the way that you want to convey what you're looking for because it doesn't tell you much. Formerly a VP of finance, again, truthful, 
statement. It tells who you are and what you're looking for. But again, it uses the negative word formally, which has some negative connotations. This one is a little bit stronger, an experienced digital design engineer seeking a new opportunity. Again, that's truthful. Again, it's more descriptive, but it doesn't do as much justice as is possible to somebody. Here's a stronger one. Social media strategist, content manager seeking new opportunities, print and digital. Uh, PR is one of those acronyms that people understand means public relations, marketing and communications. There are some acronyms that are readily understood by recruiters and by, by job boards, but if it's an unusual one, you want to spell it out the first time that you use it. This one is pretty short and descriptive of what the individual does. Supply chain, procurement, and purchasing. It doesn't sell the level or the extent or the industries that they may have worked in, but it may be spark enough curiosity that somebody's going to click through and read more of your resume in the about section. The next area is senior accountant, general ledger is one of those acronyms again. And financial reporting, cost accounting is another one. Executive assistant, there are about 40,000 of those in the Dallas Fort Worth area, having worked for the number of executive assistants that were out of work when I was in the outplacement field. Budgeting and event planning gives some amplification of the skills and experience that they may have. IT project manager, IDLE, which is a certification scrum master and agile. Pretty descriptive for someone in the IT field and re IT recruiters know those terms and may look further. There's another one, general manager, manufacturing aerospace. It's pretty distinct and short, concise, gives an overview of what the individual is and what their background is for people that are looking. But let's take a look at some other headlines, some good ones and some ones that are booed. VP of marketing, global marketing, could be improved by adding some additional statements to it. Remember I said that you have 200 characters in your headline to play with. Creating value for businesses. Again, one of the results that they're talking about. Increased sales by 40%. Again, something tangible that somebody can identify with. Project manager, there are probably again, 40,000 of those in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It also identifies sales manager and program management. So the individuals had some selling skills as well. This one it specializes in a particular industry, international sector of the aerospace industry. Customer service, I know I went to the car dealer to have my car serviced last week and customer service manager is the one that will probably ask me about my experience at the car dealership with a service. But one of the things that they can tell is somebody who's aimed at customer centric aim and increasing sales and through customer retention, because most of the car business, the profits for the dealers right now are not in selling cars, but in the services that they provide. Moving on, letting recruiters know that banner underneath your, underneath your name is open. You can add things to that to turn it onto your headline. It will last for up to 90 days. You can select what you want recruiters to know about you. Again, the type of work that you're looking for and the locations. This one has locations because they're open to different areas of the country. They've indicated that they're open to California. Okay, that's important to let recruiters know that. So if you're looking outside the area, it's one way to tell people about that. Okay, the next area as we drop down on your profile is your dashboard in the featured section. And we'll take a look at these in just a second, some amplification of this. But this, you may have looked at these statistics and wonder what they're all about. This is the number of times that a posting, I posted information about this uh, webinar online and I had about 300 people who looked at it. There's a number of times that I've appeared in search appearances and we'll see what that's available. The search salary insights is something that LinkedIn has added within the last year. Give some idea of the salary level for the jobs that are out there. It's not the most accurate salary survey, but it does give some idea what jobs are paying. The featured section, notice here is job hunting with LinkedIn. That's today's uh, presentation. I just uploaded today's presentation on my LinkedIn uh, homepage, and again, the other ones that I've worked with, okay? As we look, if we clicked on that search appearances, these are the keywords that people would have used, and these are the companies where those people were, have worked. They may have been looking for a recruiter, uh, somebody at Lockheed is looking for a recruiter to help them find another job, or Lockheed is, has a recruiter that's looking for another recruiter to join their firm, but this is a way to identify some companies that may have a 
may be needed, you may need to add them to your target list of companies because they have the kinds of jobs that you're seeking. Let's take a look at some summaries. Okay. This is a pretty good summary, although it's a little bit longer. Again, the recommendation is to have four or five lines right in here, and then some bulleted items underneath your on your summary. And we'll take a look at that when we take a look at my, my profile a little bit later. But again, this one starts out again with the email address right up there at the top. It describes a financial planning and analysis individual, okay? that they've been a leader, which could be manager, or they can be a senior level individual contributor. Again, they also have some areas of specialization down there. Again, I mentioned spelling out FPNA. If you're going to use that financial planning and analysis, those are the kind of things that you want to spell out the first time that you've used them. Okay, and here's some other sample surveys. Again, in, in your summary, you can also use first person. You know, I'm grateful to be a partner, as it says there. Keep on competencies. They notice that they've used some underline to make that stand out a little bit further. Okay, and the different types of job titles that they've had and where are some of their relevant experiences. Another one, I'm a strategic hands-on marketer. Normally those kind of words are not best in your headline, but they're okay for your summary as long as you amplify what they're all about. Let's move on down your profile and take a look at your experience section. In your experience section, you wanna have your job title, the company name and address. If it's a company that's not well known, you may wanna add a tagline one line summary of what the company does. Again, I mentioned your duties and responsibilities, limit that to three to five lines and then some bulleted, bulleted areas of accomplishment. Notice here is recruiter, the dates where I was working with Oracle Corporation. Here's the four lines of that. Here are some bulleted items for that, some accomplishments that I had as a recruiter. And when I left Oracle, when I retired, my, the director of recruiting sent me an email. I just incorporated that and put it in my profile. It's the same kind of thing as a, as a recommendation. It lets people know a little bit more about you. And this is out of the public domain. If you don't have a current position, if you're not working and don't have a current position, you need to add one. It's easy to do that. What's the title of the work that you're seeking? This particular one is for a software applications developer. They're looking for full-time work, okay? Again, the kinds of industry, the company that they're looking for is financial services. You can, as opposed to a specific company, you can put the type of industry that you're looking at. Okay. And location, as I started to type in DAL or Dallas, you notice that the intelligence there allowed me to add it. But you can add more details to some of the information about your background as a, in this case, as a software applications developer. Having this kind of information is more likely to get. Uh, convert connection requests, more profile views, as well as more messages from people. Let's take a look at your skills and endorsement area. This area is the one that you, appears on your profile. Uh, you can choose up to 50. LinkedIn will choose the first three. If you don't select three, we'll choose them for you. But you can see right here, you can add ones like type in journalism as you start to type it type that in, or if you start to type in one up here and it's not one that's recognized, it won't be added to your list. But these are the ones that you can continue to add. Your top skills should be the ones that you have as we look a little bit further. This is skills and endorsements. The top three here are ones that I've selected, career consulting, uh, career counseling, executive search and recruiting. Notice these are the endorsements that I've had. 99 people have endorsed me for each of these. And here are the number, the people that have endorsed or where they have worked in that particular situation. But again, you can arrange those. And one of the ways that you arrange those is by doing that, it will list the top three. If I push on the put, if I click on the push pin there, it will drop down below into the group below. And I could select one from below, like recruiting and move that up to the top. And additionally, you can come over to these uh, four bars that are hold down your cursor and move those three around so that one can appear on top of the other. So if you're looking for recruiting type jobs, I might've just limited that to recruiting as opposed to career consulting. Or if I was looking for a career consultant, career coach, or some of the other things that you can look, but there are up to 50 of these that are down there. In other words, in mine, I've only got 49 identified that I've 
have worked with some uh, been identified for me and how they came up with it, but I don't know, but that's interesting to kind of speak. Okay, optimize your profile. One of the reasons that you wanna optimize your profile or one way that you can do that is by taking a look at other people. If you do a search, in this case, I did a search for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area under people, okay? And that's over here under the jobs area. This, this tab has jobs. And when you click the down arrow, people is one of those that you can click on. And I did a search for recruiter in the Dallas area. When I was active in recruiting, I would generally appear in the first two screens. That's the first 20 thumbnail sketches that appear. If you don't first appear in the first 10, they're up there, that's 100 thumbnail sketches. You probably need to work on optimizing your profile. And the way that you can do that is take a look at some of the people. Take a look at what they say in their profiles and adopt some of those words into your profile. Don't copy them verbatim unless it applies to you. Again, because somebody will know, may know the person that you copied and know that that isn't you. Okay. Searching for job hunting. We want to take a little using it for job hunting. How does LinkedIn run searches? How do recruiters search? And take a look at some results from recruiter searches. And then how do you search for a job? And creating job alerts and how to use the filters and then searching for people. That's the next section that we want to take a look at. LinkedIn rates every section of the profile. Again, values for each section, and the score is based on the sum of these values. Again, it adds them up when somebody does a search. The highest scores mean in each category will be the highest ranking of overall when somebody searches for somebody with that kind of background. Keywords are important from your profession. You can find them, and the best way to do that is to take a look at some of the, the job advertisements or job postings that you're looking at for your career field. That's going to contain the keywords from your profession if you don't know what they are. What are your skills that are they're important? And we'll take a look at some of those as we've done. Okay. Exact match of the job title to either the current or previous job titles, your headline. We'll take a look at specific companies or industries, like healthcare is one. And we'll take a look at one of the search results that's looking for people in the high-tech industries in the Seattle area. That you're open to work. Recruiters like open, like low, low hanging fruit. It's always easier to talk to somebody and ask them about their background if they might be interested in an opportunity than having somebody that's not interested. Those that are open to work generally are a little, at least willing to listen to the opportunity. Geographic location. Most applicants have taught recruiters that they don't want to drive more than 20 to 25 miles from, to work. So geographic location is one of those considerations unless it's a job that can be done just about anywhere, can be done remotely or require some travel. All-star status, as I mentioned, and first and second degree connection and having a large number of connections. Comments on your, on the, your profile, on articles or wishing somebody a happy birthday or posting a blog are all things that add to your scores. But what do recruiters actually look for? Well, first thing that they typically look for are keywords. They look at job titles or job titles that you've had over the years. And they look at it in your headline. They look in your open to work section. They look in your employment section. They'll take a look at your skills. They'll take a look at your industries and specific companies that you may have worked for. They'll take a look at your education. I know what I one of the jobs I applied for a number of years ago. They were looking for an MBA from a top 10 business school in the United States. The University of California at Berkeley, depending upon whose survey that you looked at, ranks in the top 10. They'll look at location, as I mentioned. Once recruiters have narrowed down their search, they'll look at your summary and employment history. So let's take a look at a search screen. This is from uh, Kurt Vandermeer. He has a, a license with LinkedIn for something called Recruiter. And they pays, I think he pays for three licenses, he pays $19,000 a year. Again, there's a lighter version, Recruiter Lite, that costs $500 a month. So it's only $6,000 a year. So it's a little bit less. But it has over 700 characters that you, or 700 checkboxes that they can have. Notice he's searching among 710 million people worldwide. But these are the things that they can check in terms of location, job title, skills, and assessments, companies that they may have worked for, schools et cetera, et cetera. Let's take a look at the first search that I have results on. This one was a more general search. It was done in the United States for, for accounts because the default setting, if you do a search without identifying location, 
will be to the United States. Notice in this case that there are about 4,280,000 people. And again, it's not a very specific search. It didn't identify a specific title in terms of level. They didn't identify any location. Skills were just very, very broad, okay? And he didn't identify any specific companies. So as a recruiter, I probably would not have run this particular search because 4,281,000 is too many candidates to even take a look at or consider. So let's take a look at another re recruiter results search. In this particular one, they were looking for a product manager or senior product manager in the greater Seattle area. They'd consider somebody from down in Silicon Valley. Okay, they were looking for experience in product marketing or product management and competitive analysis in another area. Again, Companies that they had some target companies they might, might add there. If they found a candidate, those would probably rise to the top of their list, which was Microsoft, Amazon, and Fluke Corporation, which are all up in the Seattle area. And University of Washington is there in the Seattle area as well. Notice that they got, for this search, there were about 6,900 total candidates. Again, some of those candidates have a connection with the company that he's applying for and are in the, on your talent brand. They've identified with you. So those candidates here have identified with a specific company. Again, this will rank the people. He's got product manager here. This one has got uh, T-Mobile, which is another, another company up in the Bay, up in the Seattle area as well. Here's a product management. So those are some categories that people would look at. Let's take it another, let's look at another search result. This one happened to be from the Chicago area. They were looking for a project manager. In this case, they did identify about 43,000 candidates, but only 83 of them are open to new opportunities. Again, those would be the 83 that you'd probably, the recruiter would probably take a look at first. Have company connections they've identified or followed your company and your brand. Again, mentioned Chicago area, but they would also consider a candidate from San Francisco or New York, major metropolitan areas. The business strategy and analytics, as well as the other skills that are mentioned there, okay? The companies, they have Google, Facebook, Evernote, LinkedIn, and I can't remember what the other one is. Northwestern is a, is a school just north of, of Chicago area in Evanston, Illinois. Let's switch gears now and shift and look for jobs. When you do a job search on jobs, although you can do it a different way just by entering the search box, but if you go to jobs and enter a job title, and don't enter a location, it's gonna to default to the United States. If you enter a job and a location, it will do that and let's take a look at some results. This is one for a senior accountant in Plano, Texas. Notice the distinctive 25 mile radius. That's the default setting on most job boards and on LinkedIn for jobs. Again, recruiters have been taught by applicants they don't wanna drive, so recruiters limit their searches to that. Again, it gives some details in this particular case, it has 144 results. I haven't checked any of additional filters, and we'll take a look at that in a minute, but it does give a thumbnail sketch about that, okay? And this is a job that was a week old in this particular case, because date posted is one of those critical factors that you want to take a look at. Again, this screen is a little bit different from what you will see today. It used to be a full screen on LinkedIn, but they've cut it back to just a half a screen now and goes down the right side of the screen, okay? Again, the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is to click past week because the average uh, response to a, a job posting on the internet or on LinkedIn is about three minutes and there can be as many as 100 or 200 in the first hour. So you typically want fresh jobs if it's a widely publicized job, okay, for your kind of work. So if an accountant would be one, that would be one that you want to look early. If you were a health and safety officer or engineer, that's a little bit more difficult. I might stretch it out to a month if the number here is really small. Again, you notice over here, this is something that LinkedIn added about a year ago. I think they, they took it or adopted it from indeed.com. It has some salary brackets. Now, again, not all jobs are gonna have salary included in them, but it's some indication of what jobs pay in that particular area. Easy apply is one of those features that LinkedIn has added, make it easy to apply. If it's just your profile that's being sent, I wouldn't do that. If it allows you to upload a resume that you've tailored a little bit to the job, then that's okay to upload it that way. Other things here, the job types, as I mentioned over here, full-time contract, part-time intern, temporary, and volunteer. 
for me, I would not be looking for anything full-time. I mean, full-time, I probably would look at contract and part-time. For some people, internships or something. For others, they're only looking to work temporary. Notice the locations. You can choose the location. So if you were in, in uh, Grand Prairie, you may not want to go to Garland or to Richardson. It's too much of a drive. You can also choose by company. You can also choose by industry. So those are just some of the filters that you can have. And then you can click on apply and those filters will be applied to the job postings. Again, another thing that you could add, this was for a recruiter in Plano, Texas. Again, there were 4,000 results for that particular. Now, if I wanted to save that job and did not have to look every day when I'm online, you could click the job alert. So you click this radio button and move it to the right. It allows you to choose whether you want a daily digest or a weekly digest of thumbnail sketches. You can look through thumbnail sketches. I still get some from Indeed.com and from LinkedIn, even though I'm not actively looking. I can look through those quickly in a couple of, couple of minutes at best. Again, once you've clicked the online, it's apply. It allows you to apply easily on that basis. So you can create a job alert that way. Okay. Let's, use, let's move on to networking. Why would I want to use LinkedIn for networking? To search for people. You can do it using the search box, the people search, your network, or a company search. That's to be able to find people at companies that you can target and send your resume directly to them rather than to, to, to their website in the tracking system. Here's one that someone created this for me. You can use the search box at the top. You can also use that for jobs. As you see, there are companies here. There's a lock lord. A law firm, there's another law firm down here. There's a hotel chain, okay? These are different ways just on, on the name lock. My name is, a, <clears throat> is unusual enough that I could do that way to search for people. The next one that you have is a people search. If we went over to the jobs tab over here, again, click the down arrow, notice that there's <clears throat> a people category here. And when you do that, that brings up the people. There were, 1,900,000 results for that. And you can choose location. If you're using the filters, you can always go back and clear the filter, clear the search and do the filter again. But that's a way to search for people using the people category. Another way to do it is to go to your network on the toolbar up there and look at your people, look at your number of connections. This person had 2,600 connections. And looking at that, they can search by filters is what they were doing. And when you do the search by filters, these are the filters that you can use. They were looking at their first and second degree connections in the Dallas Fort Worth area and worked at Lenox International in Richardson. Okay. And they were looking for somebody with a job title of talent acquisition, a recruiter. They were looking for who do they send their resume to so they can address it directly. Company search, in this, in this particular situation, I did a search for Med, Med Analytics, which is in Richardson on Bush Turnpike. And what I did was to look at people. They have 510 employees in the, you know, for the company. Most of them live in the United States, 129 of them are here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So by clicking on people, I clicked on the 129 for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there's only one recruiter. Brianna Sam, I could send something directly to her. Or I could connect with her because she's open to connections. And if you use the connection like that, be sure and identify where you found their name and how you want to connect. If it's through, as Jeff will talk about at the end, we do a pledge. We use that to identify where we've encountered that particular individual. Okay. You can also, on a company website, you can visit the website, but there's a jobs tab, and you can create a job alert for that particular company. Again, that particular company, then that when they post new jobs that match your criteria, then they will send you an analysis of that. You don't have to go looking for those. But that's an easy way to get notified from your target companies. Some homework for you as we wrap up. Again, you want to complete your profile section. As we take a look at some people's profiles, we'll call it that. What name do you want to be known by? Okay, what do you call by? Use that as the title on your, on your name on your profile. Your headline is job or job titles of positions that you're looking for. 
by not including a profile or headline, it defaults to your last job title, which may not be what you're looking for. I do recommend open to work if you're, if you're looking for a job. It appears below your headline, you can add titles and let recruiters know what your op open opportunities. Include your phone number and your email on the first line of your about section, even if it's at the bottom as well. Make it easy for me to be able to click on the email to send you something or to pick up a phone and call you. Include in your experience section, your company names, your job title, limit your duties to three to five lines and include a couple of bullet measurable results or accomplishments. They add credibility to your experience. You wanna include keywords from your profession, include your skills, the ones from your profession and choose the top three if they are, if you haven't already done so. Make those the ones that you want, those the ones that you want recruiters to know about. And then do a people search using your title and geographic area. There's a typo there, I missed that. And an appeal, that's a way to find out about you and how you show up on LinkedIn. Jeff, I'm gonna turn it back to you. All right, what would you like to do? Would you like to look at some people's profiles? Let's or what would you like to do? people's profiles. Okay, if somebody wants to, in the chat box, put your name and uh, we will then go search and find you on LinkedIn. We'll take a look at your profile. Just remember, it will be, we'll be putting it out on YouTube and uh, YouTube channel and on Facebook. Any volunteers? Would you like for us to look at your profile? All right, here we got our first one. Do you want to, Locke, you want to show LinkedIn? Uh, if I can, how do I do that, Jeff? I've screwed it up again. Just uh, go to the very top. You should be able to hit new share and then select your whatever browser you're using to show LinkedIn. Well, it's not at the bottom, it's at the very top, maybe. One of the options say new share. For some reason, it's got me all screwed up, Jeff. I, I tell you what, let me just, let me stop your sharing. And now can you find LinkedIn now? Okay. If not, I can call it up myself. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I'll, what, do you have it called up? Because we don't see it. I've got, I've got, well, let me see if I can bring it up. I've got it linked in live now. Share screen. Okay. I'm up. All right, there we go. All right. First person is Teresa T E R E S A. Last name Leith, L-E-E-T-H. This one? Yes. Okay. Well, let's take a look at, uh, Teresa has connect. I'm gonna violate the rules and I'm gonna ask for a connection. I'm, I'm not gonna send a note, I'm just gonna do that. Well, let's take a look at your profile. Okay. Since, remember I mentioned connecting? Let's take a look at it. Notice she has her email address. So at least I can get hold of her if I'm a second or third degree connection, okay? She's got some information about who she is and what she's looking at. She's looking for an IT executive position. She's done enterprise applications, business, global business systems. So that's good. You've got some more space that you can work with. I would guess that you've used about 120 characters, okay? Let's take a I look like further the, down. I like the background that she has at the very top. Okay, she's got a good background. We have one mutual group that we're in, and I will put in a, a plug for Jug, Jeff's book if you have not read his book. <laughs> it's an excellent book as a candidate job hunter. There's also one for a career consultant that I had. Okay, she let's has- her about section, yeah, let's open that up. Oops. Okay, let's look at her about section. Again, I would add some bulleted items here. Notice, again, to see more what you're trying to get people to do, but break up this, the text that says- oh, Scroll up top lock. That's the about section up there. I'm sorry. 
So you weren't in the about section, you were in the experience. Go up a little higher. Right okay, there. the about okay. section. Yeah. Okay, again, I would break, this is good breakup of how you do that. I've used it, we'll look at mine in a minute, and see how the bullets there. She's used arrows here, as opposed to bullets or asterisks, which are fine. The different areas that she has, excellent. Again, I would still, I would also add your contact information right here at the top. Okay. And I'd add some accomplishments as well. I'm a proven leader. That's probably a true statement. I'm a focused senior IT leader. What demonstrates that? What gives some results or examples that, that amplify that? Well, the bulleted item between these two right there was where you want your bulleted item. Okay. It could be indented a little bit. You can take Perfect. your about section offline to a Word document edit it the way you want, and then take it back and paste it in, okay? Notice something here on her Oxy experience, these bulleted items, this is different jobs that she's held at Oxy. We take a look at mine, I was with Siebel and with Oracle, they're both shown together in that. And this is something LinkedIn does to show that all this is experience at Oxy with 13 years over there. And there's one more role there. She had another one, I don't know whether it was a, was it a break, 13. Yeah, so one more role. So she had three different jobs there. I, I actually had four, but three were she in management. More, yeah, she, yeah. One three were in leadership and then one was individual contributor. Education, okay. She's noticed some additional coursework that she's had. Uh, Harvard Business Review, I don't know if it was a seminar or a workshop or something that she attended. She does some volunteer work. Uh, as well. Okay. Her top three skills are IT management, management, and enterprise software. Okay. Again, people can go to, go through that and look at you, and they can click to endorse you as well. She's got. I would may I would maybe suggest you take something other than management because if somebody searches for manager or management, it's going to pop up with IT management. There's probably another skill that you could use to emphasize. Well, let's take a let's ta let's take a look at our other skills. These are the other skills that she has that she could choose from. And if she goes in and clicks the push pin by management, it'll drop down to this knowledge, this group of skills below, and she can select one of these others and bring it up to the top. Okay. Yeah, management is very generic. Give it be a little bit more specific that people can see one of your other things that are a little bit more it could be application development, it could be tools that you have used. Uh, micro, Microsoft SQL Server is a database. SAP application is something that if you're interested in companies that have SAP, that might be something you want to bring up as well. I got it. I, I agree. I like these technical leaderships probably even better. Whatever you want to include, but that's how you go about changing. That's the reason I mentioned it. And one other sort of important point here, when you're looking at your skills and stuff, make sure that those skill words are in your profile someplace. Because uh, I remember I, I saw a lot, or I saw a Kurt do a search, and the only place it showed up, the only place a keyword showed up that he was looking for was in the skill, but it never showed up anywhere in his in that person's work experience. So he sort of questioned, well, did the person really have that experience? So try to make sure those keywords are in there at least twice or three times. Sure. And as many places, it could be in the work, it could be in the experience section, could also be up there in your headline, just as and individual words. Section. Right. While we're mentioning it, I'll mention that anybody who wants the, the presentation, if they will send me an email, lock Alderson, all one word, at gmail.com, I will send you the whole slide deck. Even though it's, this is available on, on YouTube. Uh, you can get the slides without that. Let's take a look at somebody else, Jeff. Yeah, I think, Teresa, you have a very good profile. Very good. Good Anybody looking else? profile. Thank you. Anybody else like to, for us to look at their profile? Or look for a job. Or, yeah, you, uh, give us a job title that you'd like us to search for. Uh, here's another name, Laura, L-A-U-R-A, -A, last name, B-O-H-L-A-N-D-E-R. 
Which one, Laura? That's me right there, the one vice president. First okay. one there, yep. Okay, I'm gonna violate Jeff's rule and connect. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jeff. Okay. Again, I would separate some of these rather than the comma. I like the pipe character, which is that character above your enter key on your keyboard. It's a shift character. Remember to put a space on either side of it. Okay, VP of operations, VP of regional VP, experience in building high performance teams. Again, doing what? VP of operations and what kind of an industry? Is it sales? Okay, let's take a look because she's a second degree connection. Again, she does have her email address, so people can get in touch with her that way, which is good. She is not, if she's open to work, it's only to recruiters, okay, because it's not showing up there. The about section, again, let's take a look at her about section. It's long, I would break it up with some bulleted items in between, okay, and we'll take a look at my profile in just a minute to see what I'm talking about there. But there's a lot of textual information there, even though they're short, no more than five lines in a paragraph. What you want to do is to break it up so that something stands out. Okay. She's got some, these look like uh, seminar, either these are snapshots of a power of a presentation, which is good, tells a little bit more about her and some of the things that she's done. This is, I think, a presentation on understanding your credit fun activities, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The experience section. Again, the about section, I would add also your contact information on that first line. Make it easy for everybody to get hold of you if you're serious about looking for a job, okay? Again, see more. I would break this up and add some accomplishments. If you bullet them or asterisk them, they stand out a little bit more than just this. Okay. Okay, this does not mention the company name and that's, that's something that you may wanna add or if you're still with the company, maybe something that you wanna go back and include. So someone told me that um, it, it was another um, recruiter that I went to a podcast for, her name was Ann, I can't remember her last name. She told me that if you're in job search, that recruiters are looking to see that you're in job search. So you should put that you're job searching. So I'm not, I, that vice president of operations. Okay, this, is your current, this is your current job then. Okay, I misunderstood. That's okay. not my current job. I'm looking for that job. So she well, said that you're supposed to put in there. That's, that's what you're a, looking for. That, that is a current job as far as LinkedIn is concerned. Okay. <laughs> but what I would yeah. also recommend you do though is uh, for the company name, you don't have a company name in there, put in your email address or put in a phone number so that it sort of helps people be able to reach out to you even quicker. Even so though they, put my email address or phone number in the company name? Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Are you lo looking for a VP or a leadership position in banking and financial services as, as the company name? Again, this, this appears that you're working in that kind of a job. What you're really doing is looking for something like that. Okay. She's got some of her license and certifications, which are sort of continuing education things. She's been endorsed for, she's only got three, okay, which is fine. Again, those may not be the one that you want to have up there. Again, okay. I take a look at the ones down below or the ones that are you know, if, you, if mortgage lending is your hot spot, risk management, those are areas, business development. If that's a hot spot area, that should be up there so it's more visible because I had to click through to get that. Gotcha. Okay. She's got only one recommendation. I would try and send information to some of your coworkers or a former boss and get them to, you know, this is the kind of work I was doing when we worked together. Can you, you know, respond and include this in a recommendation for me. Write it out for them. And more likely than not, they're going to send you back the, res re the recommendation as you've written it. But make sure you type, make sure you check it for typos. So one thing I can tell you about that, okay? 
Jeff, let's quickly take a look at me, my profile. I want to do that to show some people some of the things that you can do with your profile. There's my profile, as I mentioned. I'm not open to work, as I've mentioned. Again, this is my dashboard. I haven't appeared in too many searches. This is my about section and my contact me. I only have my email because I don't want necessarily want phone time, phone numbers, I mean phone calls. The about section. But this is when I was with Meg, one of the other groups that I work with, a career consultant at Lee Heck Harrison and with, with uh, TF International. Mullen International shows some of that, but if you see that, see more. Those are different ways. Those stand out a little bit more. Another way to send those things out. They can be in multiple places in your profile. And if I have, okay. if I have the one for Lee Heck Harrison, I also had because Lee Heck Harrison asked for candidate feedback on the on their coach. This was some feedback that was given to me anonymously. Okay. But these are some of the coverage things that you can include in your profile. Notice I've used asterisks there. In other areas, those can be bullets because I don't think that LinkedIn has a bullet that you can use in their editor. Okay. So let's take a look at somebody else for either a job or- Well, we're just about out of time here. So uh, I think we're, we're gonna stop here today. Back to you, Jeff. Yeah, so we'll, we'll stop here today. Locke, I want to thank you very much for your time. Great information, great presentation as always. Uh, so uh, if uh, for next week, if you'd like to join us, Ruth Lipsky, who is a, also a career coach. Uh, she also works at Lee Heck Harrison. Uh, she's going to talk about LinkedIn search engine optimization. So a little bit more detail. We'll get into We'll actually search for some jobs. We'll search for some people on LinkedIn next week. So please join us again next week. You know, just remember in your profile, you want results. Results sell. So don't tell us what you did from a job description. Tell us the results you had from what you did, because that will mean a lot more to everybody. Okay, I need everybody to please raise your right hand and repeat after me, except for Locke, because Locke violates my rules. Uh, I, Jeff Morris, promise to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. Uh, very, very, very important. Uh, Career Drift Tips and Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Hopefully, you'll join us. Tomorrow for Interviewing Wednesdays, we'll be on session number seven, how to discuss compensation and the circumstance around leaving your previous job. These are two of the four questions that you will be asked in every interview you ever go on. How much did you make and why did you leave your last job? So join us uh, tomorrow at one o'clock. And then this Thursday being the third Thursday of the month, we'll be talking about resumes. Carol Brookell, who's a certified professional career coach will be with us. She'll talk about her favorite resume tips. And then this Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, how to fireproof your career with Pete Havel. If you'd like to join the Career DFW and Career USA LinkedIn groups, you're welcome to join one or both of them. You do not need to live in the, live in the DFW area to join the DFW group. Uh, this session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. On the YouTube channel, it looks like this. Just at the very bottom, you know, don't click on the video, but click where it says View Full Playlist, where you see that red arrow. And what will happen is up will come a list of all the different topics and titles and dates. Uh, the newest one should always be on the very, very top. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, you're welcome to join the Career USA mailing list. I'll put this email address up at the very end. Uh, what you will get every day will be the title of the day, the topic of the day, and the Zoom link of the day. That way you don't have to go search for it every day if you'd like to join us. Please know Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Locke is a volunteer. All of our speakers are volunteer. I'm a volunteer. Uh, we have no full or part-time employees. Everything I've done over the last 13 years has been as a volunteer. Career DFW survive on, survives on donations. Please consider making one when you get your next job so we can continue to provide the services that we do provide. So thank you for joining us today. Locke, thank you very much again. Thanks, Jeff. Have a great week.